Howdy, this is Dr. Stacy Lyle. Um, this is chapter two in Petroleum GIS, and we're talking about automated mapping uh, and facility management GIS. And we're literally looking at the upstream, downstream, midstream information and the data flow. And we're going to look into RTU, ZFM, SCADA, and integrated management systems or real time data logging systems as we discuss the process of uh, managing facilities or automated uh, mapping processes with facility management. It's focusing a lot on the downstream and the uh, midstream portion and we'll, we'll touch some on the upstream but cover that a little bit later on in other sections. So you know when we look at uh, the aspect of, of managing uh, uh, facilities or automated mapping uh, we're really looking at fixed assets in the information that we have uh, collected. Here I show a, a piece uh, where, where I'm looking at a natural gas system that is basically a system that is uh, there in uh, uh, Corpus Christi, Texas and it's uh, a system that is made to manage the uh, the the local gas uh, distribution system system that is provided to the users in that area and so that natural gas system uh, the ultra consumer of it these are facilities and this is really a downstream facility uh, of assets that is collected and mapped and they have all the information about the gas lines but they also have information about is it being serviced is it up is it down if they have a leak how many houses do they need to go knock on doors and one uh, warn people if you will that that there's a leak uh, uh, of some sort and they might need to evacuate so they've got information like that but they also have the ability to uh, manage orders or uh, service uh, things that need to go out into the field they can do that through this facility management type GIS and this is a not a very complex but a very user-friendly type system that is out there now when we look at a refinery you know a refinery basically is a chemical processing plants or just like the old bootleggers if you will they take the crude oil and distill it and create fuel oil, diesel oil, kerosene, petroleum, butane, protein, uh, pro propane uh, as they heat the products and you see a lot of those towers inside refineries where they're distilling that that crude oil that they bring in so there's a lot of pipe work and facilities that are there that need to be mapped and to manage you know one of the good examples of that I can show you is working with uh, like a geosystems and we had a lot of scanning, uh, high definition scanning processes uh, that we would do in that scenario with laser scanners. And we would go through the scanning process and scan all these facilities uh, that you see here and, and make some very detailed three dimensional scans of them. The three dimensional scan is very useful, but if you cannot click on the pipeline and get information from it, what value does this have? It has a, a pretty picture, a, a nice looking uh, graphic of what they're there, but we need to add that spatial data, if you will, back to the data. Now, you know, when we look at all the products that are generated at a plant, uh, you know, majority of them is gasoline. Uh, we have kerosene, distilled fuel oil, you know, makes up, and then the rest of the portion that is made up here. When I look at plastics, the value of plastics and the cost to make plastics is just really amazing at what the true value of what our oil products are. I look in the future from the asphalt fault and the road oil, I say, you know, maybe uh, 10,000 years from now, we probably will chip up the roads and burn them when we run out of uh, oil products because uh, we still have a lot of that oil products that come into our asphalt for our roads. Now, natural gas or oil that comes up to the surface are usually held in tanks or put into pipelines. And pipelines send the data over to compression stations. And compression stations are a lot like facilities or, or, or refining facilities. They add pressure and send that pressure up to the lines. 
And we have a bunch of as-builts that we get of these compression stations, of these refineries that we put together. And we use that into our GIS. And again, these are often, uh, often uh, either uh, from plans or, or we go out and resurvey it or we do these scans uh, from that standpoint. Uh, we get into building information modeling, which is more that 3D as we were just looking at it with the heads up type scanning element of things where we are looking at uh, the 3D scanning of uh, BIM and trying to fuse that. Here's a presentation I did of BIM and GIS Fusion where we're taking the architect engineering serving and construction drawings and we're using all this big data and merging it up to a common platform. So as we look through our workflow, if you will, of uh, the uh, petroleum world where we do geoscience, land regulatory, drilling and constructions, operating from the upstream side. We generate a lot of geospatial data and we have it all built on a very tight coordinate system. All that data generated with a lot of different data sets can be pushed to say ArcGIS online to a common workflow. But it all starts a lot with the procurement process so we don't have to work with a lot of uh, old data we can use the most relevant data but before we do a lot of the BIM and GIS fusions we have to talk about the standards and the standards that we use in our industry the seabed survey data model probably one of the most common standards that we have from the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers that dictate how we collect a lot of data that is for geohazards or sub, sub surface, seabed surface data that is collected. So you can go out and look at that standard that's out there. But let's talk about pipelines and midstreams. They have a lot more standards. The oil is usually gathered and put up onto tanks. Uh, some there are some some oil lines, uh, crude lines, or or. Uh, um, actual um, um, heating oil lines that are out there but natural gas is the most common that is put out there natural gas is either stored locally or instantly put in a pipeline if it's not stored locally it's got to be flared uh, right there at the site so you, you have some some flaring that goes on or it goes right into these pipelines and sent straight out now the gathering systems gather it from the individual wells bring it to these compression stations where they add the pressure and send it to these transmission, large transmission lines that push the uh, natural gas all over to cities who purchase the natural gas. So if you have a city somewhere, let's say in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they want to buy natural gas, they might buy it from an individual who is selling natural gas for the year 20. 20 say in two years from now they're buying their natural gas that they need it'll come to them through these transmission lines so the gathering lines kind of put it up to a compression station where some of the refinery and things are removing the odorant or that rotten egg smell is sometimes added to uh, that to that to that gas at that point and it's pushed through the lines so we have some GIS standards and they mainly are coming through the Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Administration in the United States that dictates how we operate. And what's key about this is that there's a lot of rules and laws that I'll cover here regularly that detect what you must do. Here I show a typical pipeline alignment that's going through where they're doing an alignment design. Here's another example of a crossing through a road where we have a design that's going on. A lot of people use the pods or the pipeline open data standard as their model to model that data. And it collects and shows us how to collect the information. Here's a hydrographic survey where we're mapping a pipeline that goes under some water because we need to know if it's exposed and it's uh, available. And here's a typical site pipeline. Easy to see this portion where in the other one there's not. But if we look at the national laws that we have, we have where it says geospatial data must be collected names and addresses of operators information must be done and every year it must be maintained we also have where our control our 
our corrosion control so that we have cathodic protection or corrosion control that we put on the pipelines that we need to keep a record or maps that's required these are the federal laws that say we must do this and that we must keep up with this information and we must go out and record or survey or locate it and check on our pipelines periodically to see where they're at and when we design and do corrections uh, on these pipelines uh, we have a lot of requirements that we have to keep up with uh, information and that information must be maintained by the operator who has these offshore pipelines uh, in our records we have to have as-built drawings and construction uh, records that we need to maintain. Uh, we need to have maps uh, that are required in the station. We have uh, ones that we have maintained that they can instantly come to us and ask us questions. Again, underwater pipelines, we need to have a coordinates on them and a geographic coordinates of pipelines and we must be able to make this available and promptly let them know if we inspect a pipeline and we find that it is exposed we need to let them know because this could pose a hazard and within 24 hours we've got to share that information and have that information available and then what records should we keep we have to keep copies or superseded copies of plans or documents or plats that we have. Each operator must maintain these records that show the location of the cathodically protected components in the neighborhood structures bounded to the protection areas. So we need to reference it there. And we need to have these record maps and plats and surveys available. For the National Pipeline Management System in 19561, we have to have geographic data attributes and transmittal uh, letters appropriate to the National Pipeline Mapping System, sharing our data back to them so that they can do a call before you dig and know where these are at. All right, so we have to have a uh, connection to the Geographic Information Systems Manager and provide this information to them. We must maintain maps and records and plats of all these facilities these have to be all maintained according to federal law and we have to keep up with this information and then there's some guidance for integrity management about digital data and that we need to have census bureau maps we need to have geographic database on commercial navigable waterways so it's telling us other layers we need to maintain with our stuff so that we can look at that in the bureau of transformation statistics databases include commercial navigable waterways and how we get that so it's not just telling we got to keep up with our data but we have have additional data on top of our existing data this is only to show you that there are regulatory things that we must do and what happens is that sometimes in these systems are not done correctly and I'll talk about that in a minute but let's talk about automated monitoring systems so a lot of these systems we monitor, we look at the flows, uh, we are needing to collect information, but uh, specifically we need to know flows at points of sale. So we use these real-time terminal units or electronic flow measurement systems or the SCADA systems that measure how things are going and operating in real time. A lot of SCADA systems are used in the public, uh, the city gas systems, a lot of the RTUs and EFMs. These are used a lot in the uh, upstream, uh, downstream process of that. But the information at the point of sales is very important because we need to know how much gas is being produced at that because of the division of interest. We need to pay royalties. And a lot of this gas is gathered with other surface locations and those other surface locations might not be all from the same operator. So in that scenario is that when we go in and we look at uh, and we'll just zoom into a place here in, in East Texas, for example. And we'll see all these wells that are in this area are not all the same operator. They are coming together and, and they have a lot of different data that's being collected and shown here. And they have pipelines 
that are running through here which are either big transmission lines or maybe some gathering lines and this well might be one operator and this well might be another operator and a lot of our gas are being mixed instantaneously between two operators that are nearby into the same system so we must maintain a gathering uh, management system that we can tell that amount for royalty payments that are out there so a lot of times we have to follow that plus in the state of Texas we have to supply not only that to the people that we uh, promised we would pay roy royalties to but the state must uh, requires us to produce to them at the casing head the amount of production that we have and we provide that information to state organizations or state regulatory information that we have to do. Okay, so what's important? What's the most important thing I need to take out of this whole portion of these automated systems and these existing systems? Well, we got to gather all this information. A lot of it is gathering it from existing plans, uh, maybe images or scans of old plans, or we have the CAD files. So we just extract it from the CAD files, and we need to put it to the as-built files. And then from there, it goes to our GIS. But a lot of times what I see is that the design plans that are currently going on are not being focused right now. Contracts are going out the door. Things are happening right now at most oil and gas companies that are not focusing on the fact that by law, as we saw above, are regulatorily required for us to collect this data. And therefore, so when we let out these contracts, we need to make sure at the procurement process, and a lot of times this is done with our governance group that we talked about previously, that data is collected and required when we put out requests for information or requests for proposals, not as an afterthought, after we've already given out these contracts, after we've already done this aspect of doing things. This is one of the biggest problems that I see in GIS Petroleum when we are looking at the ability for facility management and automated systems that we are not gathering this information on the fly as we need to as we get it. So as you are building on refineries, making improvements, which they are constantly doing, we need to think of not just getting these engineering drawings and get them done, that, that this is going right into our GIS. And we could actually manage this on the fly. What I've implemented in a lot of places and what we'll do in this uh, exercise for this course is what's called open design. And this is where we use extract, translate, load tools such as FME where we go in and we read people's AutoCAD drawings. We read their design files while they're drawing it. I could have a surveyor engineer in Denver, Colorado or Bolivia that's building or designing or doing work, as-built work or, or new pipeline, new pipeline routes, even automated systems. This data is being generated and as they're drawing it, I'm reaching into their drawing extracting the layers and say putting it out on ArcGIS online and sharing it with everyone involved so the decision making can be done and we can stop any overruns or problems that constantly happen in our industry. Okay, so this section to summarize was looking at facility management, trying to build a GIS, try to make BIM with that, Try to make it in real time where we can see the data as it goes along. If you have any questions, please give me a call at any time. Thanks.